the best thing about making workshop projects is you can make them as rough and ready or as overcomplicated and overengineered as you like. This project definitely falls in the latter category. I got my new miter saw, second hand, a few months ago now and I'm in love with this machine and I want to make a proper miter station to solve a few different problems. This handle just touches here and of course I want to bring the body of the miter saw in line with the tabletop so I can put a running stop block solution on here too. Keeping in mind also that underneath I have the guinea pig's hay box and I want to keep that front open so that the box can be used as it is and I've got about 50 centimeters extra on the far side of the bench before it makes contact with the opening mechanism of the garage door. So I'm gonna put a cantilevered drawer out there too. And if that doesn't sound complicated enough, I wanna make this entirely, and I mean entirely, out of half laps. I have no idea how many there are gonna be. We'll count as we go along. No, this is not a sane way of doing things. Yes, it's going to be incredibly hectic. We're going to do this purely for the sheer joy, we'll call it, of the exercise. Testing my precision, testing my patience, and just because, why the hell not? The last consideration I'm going to make is I have been scabbing over the past few months many, many, many bed slats of various types and styles. So they are what I'm going to use for the vast majority of the construction of this bench, so it really shouldn't cost me very much. Overambitious? Yes! Completely rubbish? Possibly. Let's see how it turns out. All right, the half lap counter is in your top left set to zero, and the first thing I had to do was build an extension fence so I would be able to make some repeatable cuts on the miter saw, which is gonna do the vast majority of the work in this project, which seemed appropriate. I thought I would start off with an error, as I've done on several videos, and here you'll see me marking out the wrong measurement. These ended up 89 millimeters shorter than they needed to be. They are the legs, and I'm not entirely sure how I managed to get to that number, but we did, and everything you see me doing here, I basically had to redo all over again, after a quick Timmy Tam break. Wifey brought me down some hot chocolate, and this is how you do a proper Tim Tam slam. Bite off the corners of a double coat Tim Tam, suck the hot, hot chocolate or coffee through, and then shove the whole thing in your gob. Tasty. Welcome to Australia. Back on the miter saw. Chop, chop, chop with the stop block gives me four legs of the wrong height, but at least they are even. I'm not going to show you every cut in this build or every mark out. I'm just going to basically put it out there once and you can see hopefully how I sped up, got more efficient as we go along and I figured out different ways of cutting the half laps. Once the legs were cut, the next thing was to do the braces and make these into some leg assemblies. Marking out every piece is very important and here you can see what I meant about the efficiency. I didn't have to measure too many of these half laps. I could just use off cuts of wood to mark out the correct widths for pretty much everything. And here's how we're gonna do it with the trenching. This is a depth stop. Most miter saws, sliding miter saws that is, will have one. And this little knob here adjusts the height. So I got a 17.5 mil scrap, which I would use as my clearance. My board's at 35 mil, so that's gonna get me about through. And I made sure that that fit all the way under. So I'm cutting about 17 mils. You'll quickly learn when trenching, however, that the depth stop stops you getting all the way to the end of the board, as you can see here. So the solution is to put a sacrificial fence in, zero clearance, chop it through, and that will give your blade the extra space that it needs so that the lowest point of the blade will cut cleanly all the way through. Here was my first trench, and yes, it is as much work as it looks like, and I had a bazillion of these things to cut. Hammer is used to clear out the waste, and it was around this point, with my first attempt at using the chisel to clean up the half lap, that I realized that was not going to cut it. Well, it would, but I don't have the patience for that, so we'd have to come up with a more overcomplicated way of doing this. There was also a bit of a technique to the trenching, got better as I went along. They were probably a bit thin there, I didn't have to quite cut them out that thin, but it was very therapeutic to belt the crap out of them with a hammer. With a test fit, if it wasn't working, you could sneak up on it very, very carefully by pushing the piece against the blade to flex it, and then you'd be able to knock off a hair until you got a lovely fit. 
taking out the guts of this one so that the braces would fit in the middle there. And that was the ugly mess that I was left with after my trenching. So I pulled out the router sled and a couple at a time, I could get my lovely servicing bit from Adam's Bits. Do you recommend his service there? 22 mil on this one. And not only was it going to be nice and clean, but with the plunge router, I could very, very accurately set the depth so that when the half lats finally came together, they would be true half laps. And there's my first result. Don't they look pretty? Here's the test fit. And this is a rough and ready project, but I was pretty damn chuffed with how well that they came out. So again, I'm not gonna show you every single joint, but this technique was used for all the big flat 90 mil half maps. And here are the first joints going together. Eight of them bump up that counter. No glue here. This is a workshop workbench, and so it will just be screws holding these. The strength is gonna come from the joinery. The screws are just acting as the fasteners that they are. Two leg assemblies knocked over. On to my long rear rails. And there was just a bit of creativity here. Effectively, I put the pieces together, mark out what needed to be removed as waste, and then hack at it any way I can, including once and only once in this instance with the jigsaw. It was a little bit of an experiment. It kind of worked, but it wasn't the best way of doing things. So after this attempt, nice tight fit. Look at that, lovely. I put the jigsaw away and return to the router. Here again, cleaning up to the exact correct depth with the plunge was very, very effective. Clamping a few bits together at the same time saved heaps of time as well, but I couldn't avoid a little bit of chisel work just to tidy up the edges. So needless to say, when you're working with bed slats, there are gonna be a few things to look out for, particularly when you want longer pieces for the braces like I'm doing now. You're gonna find a lot of stuff like edge bits, and that, honestly, I can deal with. It's gonna be hidden anyway, don't care. More importantly, that's actually a good bit, because it's flat. A lot of them, this one's probably the worst. You might even be able to see that on the camera. It is so twisted and basically fecked up in every single direction. You're gonna have to find a use for that one. It's still worth it for the free wood. Another pretty spinning diagram. Here are my long cuts on the straightest bits that I could find, and that is why I'm building miter station. Marking out where these will go into the leg assemblies, and the middle brace, which will come between those two back rails just after they're installed. However, I ran into a problem here. Straight away, I could not, on the long edge, trench on the miter saw. So instead it was the Craig square cut and the circular saw set to the correct depth in order to get these short edge, I should say, cutouts. And here you can also see it works basically the same way. Smack out the chips, clean it up, and that is 12 half laps already done. So you can see I'd already done the mortises, I could fit in the next piece for that vertical brace, mark it off, clean it out, and we're starting to get a bit of stability to the workbench. Bang up the 14. Now the longest piece was gonna be the front rail, and this is also, while not a bed slat, a reclaimed piece of bed but it did have a bit of lacquer on there, which I didn't like, so it was over to the DIY jointer. I'll put a link up the corner if you wanna see how to build yourself one of these out of a three inch planer. And I was just taking the varnish off. The only fool's errand I had here was that I'd actually already measured and cut one of the mortises and it fit really snug. And then I planed off the varnish. This was also a big error. There was that little void in the back where the bed slats used to go, and I thought I was very clever by getting a terrible piece of scrap plywood to fill it, and it caused me no ends of grief down the line because cutting mortises out in that plywood was nasty. I should have used some solid pine. However, that's probably not gonna be a problem for many people. 
Here you can see where that pre-cut mortise caused me problems. I needed a shim. Lucky there are lots of those little biscuit things lying around that I'd knocked out of the joints. And I was able to level up and tighten this joint up, which was now too wide. Front rail being installed. Use some really big ass screws on this. So I need to extend my pilot hole through into the frame and the shim would hold everything nice and level. And now it's time to check in with Dana Designs. There you go, Mark. That's not how you check square. That's how you check square. Check square, check square, check square, check square, check square. TM. All right, stopping a dickhead. They do go check out Mark's channel. He's an awesome bloke. Check square. And here's what I was talking about with the plywood. It was a pain to chisel and clean up. Ah well, live and learn. Now you might have noticed that those weren't real half laps. They were checkouts on that. I'm not entirely sure why I did that. It made sense to me in the plans, but I'm counting them anyway. Speaking of Dana Designs, AKA the Pallet Punter, uh, if you go watch his method of cutting half laps, it is much more logical and sane where he uses his table saw and band saw to make two cuts and it gets things done a hell of a lot faster. Sadly, I have neither of those tools, but I did manage to, on some of these cuts, work out how to do it with the circular saw, and it is vastly superior to trenching. And it was about this point that I realized I'd built the world's worst hammock, and it was time for a nap. Now how the f do I get out? I so thought I was gonna get stuck in there. Here's a nice example of that two cut method. I could clamp these bits all together for the vertical draw rises and bang, 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 bang. Out they go. God, that's so much easier. Here's that bloody piece of plywood again, causing me grief. But we hacked it away and we are up to two dozen half laps as we install the draw rises into the main frame. And check level. Quick as you like, they're exactly the same as the earlier ones. We got the braces on there and it was time to do our first test fit. Away with you old shoddy made bench. Here we go, let's fit the new shoddy made bench. Now this was, from an engineering point of view, the trickiest part of the build. I didn't want an extra leg, as you might have noticed that my dust cart lives underneath this new bench. So I needed a cantilever solution to get a draw and also to extend my work surface. So I had kept some of the frame unattached in order to allow me to fit in this back piece. It was going to have three connections, which I've cut off camera here. And importantly, that little notch you can see on the side will actually have the miter saw sitting on top of it on its MDF base, right here. So the miter saw's weight will be bearing down all 32 kilos of it, including the MDF on that, onto that little peg and should stop that drawer from being able to lift up regardless of how much weight I put on there. This was a bit of a tricky fitting together exercise, but it did bump us over the magic 30 number of half laps cut. This bit wasn't really going in too well, so I had to pull it apart again. Couldn't find a way to do this mechanically, so I broke out my brand new Ryoba saw and this is a little beast, perfect for this sort of application. Take off a really thin sliver, but flexible enough that I can clean up both edges flush. Still looking at levelness. Now I do want to waste my big screws, so when attaching these brace assemblies to the frame, I decided to counterbore some slightly shorter screws, basically using a larger drill bit to give me space to put the 50 mil screws securely in. Up goes the wheelbarrow and another counter bore underneath to hold that cantilever nice and strong. She was getting a bit of weight in her by this stage. I had to cut some more risers for the cantilever, but bug it up and I'd left my saw blade cutting at 45 instead of 35 millimeters. So the mortises were a little bit deep on one side. No matter, pulled out the straight edge and cleaned those up. Ryoba helped too, to get a lovely joint to support the third drawer. I was pretty impressed with this fit actually. It was nice and snug. And just like before, we cut another quick brace, cleaning that out with the router too. 
And we're nearly there. These are still bed slats, they're just a little bit thinner, only 19 mil. The rest of the stock had been 90 by 35. And I found out another way to cut half laps, this time using the plunge router. A few little supports clamped on there and it made quick work of the 10 half laps for these draw tops to fit over. I cut the other side on the router table in two passes, getting about half of the waste out the first pass and half on the second. The fence made it really easy and clamping two of them together meant I could cut them pretty safely with a push block. Didn't take very long at all. In fact, the only really tricky bit of this was for the cantilevered section because it needed a mortise right in the middle and that was a little bit trickier to measure and line up. But again, on the router table in two passes, I was able to do that quite effectively. These will be the last bits of wood and the last half laps that I need to count. A few taparoos, screw them down, and my frame is nearing completion. So we should have really stopped at 45, but I had uh, completely and utterly on purpose to get the absolute snug fit buggered something up. It turns out that when I tried to put the miter saw on there, it didn't fit by about two millimeters. So two more little cuts, they're not really half laps, but I'm gonna count them in order to get the handles of the miter saw fitting onto the frame and have it flush. It was a lot of work. This was several weeks. You might have noticed the uniform changes of just coming into the workshop for a few hours, cutting a few joints, making them fit, tweaking everything as we went along. But at the end of the result, after a quick sand to take off the sharp edges, it all looked pretty good. That cantilever worked amazingly well. I was a bit dubious about my engineering skills and 47 half laps-ish later, we've got the bulk of the construction for this project done. Join me next week as I put in the drawers, the work tops, and the sliding stop block. Not going to be a fence on this one to finish the project off, but I hope you enjoyed this little bit of madness, and I would highly recommend never trying to do this so there will not be any plans. If you want to be a nutbag like me, you can make it up as you go along too. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see how this madness ends and catch my other woodworking projects and DIY tips. Catch you around. See you later.